when you practice practice like a match when you play in a match just literally take that game and think you're in it i think the most important thing is to think about your process you know what is an aggressive mindset you've got james anderson bowling at his best swinging the ball moving the ball on a green top wicket aggressive there is understanding where your off stump is understanding where your methods are understanding where you're going to score runs from him or how will you bat against him aggression always you know we we get kind of misled by this word aggression you know it's batting to score neil not batting to save your wicket i think you must fail you will fail you play cricket for yourself you play cricket for your team as long as you're honest as long as you love the game and as long as you're giving your best that's it Cricket Love Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Sid Lahiri. Sid, how's things going? How are you, Neil? It's all good. Lovely to see you. You know, thanks for coming on the channel once again. A friend of the show. Yeah. So, Sid, you're head of Academy Cricket Development at the Rajasthan Rules. You want to give us some advice on batting mindset and mentality tips for all players? Let's dive straight yeah. into it. Would it be fair to say? it all starts at practice yeah it does it does because sometimes what happens is when we practice we practice with uh, no fear you see the the challenge of batting is that when you're batting you uh, you will have to get out you will get out you know you will make a mistake you can't just you know uh, remain not out all the time that the game doesn't evolve like that so the issue which comes through is that when we play in a net we think oh there's no need to worry and we just bat without a plan and without a structure and the most important thing then is that when we go out to play a match and then the sense that then the worry of losing your wicket comes to your mind then you lose your natural stroke play you lose your methods you don't really know how you're going to execute your methods your process and then either you know you land up you know failing or you know you land up in a position which is quite uncomfortable and you don't really know what to do so you are absolutely right it's a very very good question you asked i think the mindset starts when you're practicing and that's where you have to start thinking as a batter that when i'm batting in a net i need to be in that you know mind that i'm playing a match so if you're facing a fast bowler you know visualize what sort of game are you playing are you playing a shorter format are you playing a longer format so you know and then the practice then the planning starts and then when you go out to play in a match you you execute exactly what you practiced so we should we should say that practice when you practice practice like a match when you play in a match just literally take that game and think you're in a net batting by its nature is a very technical game how should a player ensure they're not overthinking things in practice so technique is very important the fundamentals of the game uh, fundamentals of batting you are again absolutely right batting is a challenging form and it's challenging because when you're bowling i'm not saying that bowling is not challenging batting it's about decision making it's about trusting your in instincts and the biggest thing is to pick length you know as a batter if you can pick length you know when to go forward when to go back so it's critical when you're playing and when you're practicing that you know you your your fundamental your technique is solid so you go through those paces and you make sure that when you are practicing you're practicing with a purpose so you know technique becomes a very very important part but then you don't jumble your head with lots of that at the end of the day you've got to you've got to understand that when you bat all that what you develop is your muscle memory 
And then that muscle memory develops. And all you need to do is then trust your instincts. So you've got to, so, you know, we go out there and we hit, you know, maybe 100, 10,000 pull shots, you know, in practice. You know, they say you have to hit a shot 10,000 times to perfect it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you, your muscle memory has developed. So then if you've practiced with a purpose, then you're going to go out in a game, you're going to pick the length. Rest comes as a muscle memory. It's an instinct. It's instinct. You, you don't have the time to think, you know, what do I do? Short ball, this ball, that ball. Where's the fielder? You don't have any time. You see the ball, you pick the leg, you execute a shot. So it's developing that muscle memory in a right way so that your length picking and your understanding of the game improves. And then as game day approaches, how important is it that you don't overanalyze and worry about the opposition, opposition too much and almost lose focus of your own game? I think, Neil, uh, again, really good question from you. I think it's, I think cricket's a bit like your title, life stories, you know, cricket's like life. You know, at the end of the day, uh, too much thinking just blocks your, clouds your brain. When you bat, if you think about performance, if you think about the bowler, if you think how your runs are going to come, the first thing you will ignore is to watch the ball and then after watching the ball, executing a shot. You'll completely ignore that. And the reason you're going to ignore that is you are, your brain's completely occupied with thoughts which you cannot control. You know, imagine if you were going out to bat tomorrow and you didn't know, you know, I mean, let's talk about the England, England India series as well. You know, today, you know, Rory Burns got out fifth ball. Night before, I don't think so he had any idea that that's going to happen. So for him to think about Jasprit Bumrah and all of that, you know, doesn't really add up because at the end of the day, he's going to go out there. Batter has to go out there and execute. So the most important thing, however simple it looks, is watching the ball. If you watch the ball, your instincts will take over. If you do not watch the ball, you will start, of, start thinking of things which you cannot control. And then players, whether they're an IPL player, test match player or a young player in an academy we're all humans how should a player deal with nerves so again you know a bit of nerves is not bad because that brings out the best in you but i am big in advising to junior players who are coming from our academy in one particular thing we are becoming increasingly a result-oriented society. And that worries me a lot because, you know, results are not in your control. I mean, you're running this wonderful channel. You don't know whether it's going to be the biggest success or whether you're going to fail. I think the most important thing is to think about your process. You know, how you're training, how smartly are you training? Now, I'll give you an example. As a batter, imagine you're getting out, playing a drive shot to an outswing bowler. And in the net, you're practicing short balls. That's unsmart. However, you might say, I batted four hours in the net. That four hours is a waste. So that's why identifying your weakness working on it, working on your strengths, having a really good process of what you can control. You can control your training. You can control working on your methods, but you cannot control results. So we need to get out of this and that will take away the nerves. You know, when you look at uh, an MSD, right? I take the name of MS Dhoni because people think, okay, there's a video, and I want uh, some of the young cricketers who are going to watch this one to watch that video where he's batting against 
Aksar Patel in an IPL match. And in the last over, 24 runs are required. 22 or 24. And you think this is impossible, you know. And he's actually hit a six. Actually, the first ball, he smashed it to long off. And he's refused a run. And then he hits four sixes and finishes the game. Now, that cannot be planning. That he, he definitely would have nerves. But actually, what he's doing is he's focusing his mind on watching that ball and smashing it out of the park. So he's holding his shape. He knows where his strengths are. So that's a really important thing for everyone. That That's the way you can start taking away these nerves. A little bit of nerves will be there. But the way to avoid this is you, you have a really good process of learning and not to worry about selections, not to worry about performances. And then when you actually walk out to the crease, what should your mindset be in terms of intent? So should it be aggressive in terms of calling quick singles or occupying the crease would be best or is it just a balance of everything? Again, you know, very, very good question. Depends on what format you are playing. So if you're playing a T20 on a flat deck, you're going out with that mindset, which is positive. And the mindset is to score runs. So yes, you know, you need that body language. You need that movement. You need to be alert and you need to be ready. If you're playing a, you know, and I always say this, you know, what is an aggressive mindset? You've got James Anderson bowling at his best, swinging the ball, moving the ball on a green top wicket. You can't be aggressive. Aggressive there is understanding where your off stump is, understanding where your methods are, understanding where you're going to score runs from him, or how will you bat against him? Aggression always, you know, we, we get kind of misled by this word. Aggression means, oh, I'm going to go there and I'm going to show the world that I can, my strike rate is 170. Aggression is also how you're coming in and actually defending a ball. Aggression is also that, right, I look super confident when I'm defending. I look super confident when I'm leaving a ball. So it depends on what type of formats we are playing. But you're right, you know, you know, you'd, but again, it depends. It's, it's, it, it's an individual to an individual. You know, you look at Virat Kohli, right? And you look at Virat Kohli and you think, He's like, why? Wow, he's full of energy, full of beans, right? But then you also look at Hashim Amla. And you look at a Rohit Sharma. I mean, you know, when Rohit is batting, you look at him and think, well, is he going to be the guy who's going to hit seven sixes in a game? So aggression, mindset, you know, you don't have to copy anyone. But when you're on the crease, you need to... As you walk in, your first job is to see where the cricket ball is. I would strongly suggest that for younger players. And then what are the keys to staying mentally fresh through an innings? Yeah, I mean, listen, one very, very good thing in, you know, if you're playing, because batting at times can be draining, you know. You, batting comes in cycles and you, you bat with your partner. And you get out to bat and you suddenly notice that all the bad balls are being bowled to your partner. And he's just gone in and he's on 30 not out. And you are getting the best balls in the world. So you need to have that patience. You need to you have that calm demeanor in thinking, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm batting. I don't need to rush. I don't need to rush anything. Because it comes in cycle. Your cycle will also come. And also... It's crucially important that when you are batting, you will get these moments when you will feel you're timing the ball well. You will feel you're not timing the ball well. So it's really important to locate the cricket ball. That's a one very good exercise, which really brings... Because I tell you what all the time happens. We beat ourselves. We are our biggest enemies. So when a ball is bowled and you've played the ball, it takes another two to three minutes 
or sometimes a little bit more or sometimes a bit less for you to face the next ball. Because the bowler has got to go back to the runner and has to come back. And that's enough for our stupid brain to start worrying about things. So if I've missed a ball and I'm thinking, wow, this guy's just, wow, what I mean, what's, what's he voting next? If I've hit a boundary, my, my, I'm, I've got this sort of energy thinking, right, so I go, I'm going to make, I'm going to hit the next one as well. So the one way to stop that and to answer your question is to locate the cricket ball. So when you're batting, imagine you played the ball and the ball's gone to the keeper. To take your mind away from any thoughts, you don't need any thoughts, positive, negative. You just need to preoccupy your brain so that the brain doesn't allow you to give negative vibes. And then, Neil, what happens when you're 60, 70, a bat batting game is easy. So what you need to do then is, as a batter, locate the ball. So if the ball goes to the keeper, the no runs are scored, walk off the crease and just follow the ball. Follow the journey of the ball going and going to the bowler. So the, if, it's a, if it's a longer format, keeper will throw the ball to first slip. First slip will throw the ball to second slip. Second slip will throw the ball to third slip. Third slip might fall, throw the ball to backward point. And this is the journey of the ball till it reaches the point when the ball's thrown and the ball's now going straight to the bowler's hand. Now, when the ball's gone to the bowler's hand, you've been standing relaxed and you've been following that. Now you don't have any more time to think about anything because you've got to get your crease, settle in and wait for that bowler to come in that ball. So what you're doing is you're stopping. And if somebody can do this exercise well, I'm telling you, honestly, they will even forget anything around their life because the brain needs to be channeled. And once the brain is channeled, it'll function. Does the key takeaway there just focusing on the next delivery? If you played and missed, Absolutely. just let it go. Absolutely. Focusing on the next ball. Absolutely. Yeah, who cares? You could nick off and someone drops you. It's not your fault that someone's dropping you. Listen, never as a batter should you think how well I'm batting. Because when someone scores 100, we don't say, oh, this was an amazing 100. And when the same player scores another 100, we don't say, oh, there's a rubbish 100. It's people who say that. On the stats... In your career stats, it'll say 100. It won't say, yeah, it's 100, but he gave a few chances. They won't say it's 100 and he didn't bat well. No one's going to say that. And then, again, from a mental perspective, how should a player look to construct an, inning, an innings, i.e., should they choose which bowlers to score off, etc.? Any tips you can give youngsters? I think the first tips I will give to young, younger players, if they have any aspirations to sort of play at a higher level, work on your technique. Because that's the first fundamental. You know, you can't play at a top level, uh, on, no matter any level, with a very conservative uh, technique and faulty technique. So work on it you know, as, a, as a younger player. The next piece of advice which I would give to them is the back foot game is now critical for batters. You've got to be very strong of the cut. You'll be very strong of the pull. You could have a very good onside game. The reason I say that is especially when you're playing in England, when the ball swings, when the ball moves, playing a drive shot through cover becomes very difficult because yes, you can execute a few, but you nick off as well. So understanding where your off stump is, if you wanted to play a longer version, being strong on the leg side and being good with the short ball are basic fundamentals which they need to work on if they want to have a sustainable cricketing career on the four day, five day format. If they're playing one day cricket and T20 cricket is the same. You know, they have to be strong on those shots, but they have to also now learn different shots. 
They've got to learn the drive along the ground. They've got to also learn the drive going over mid off, going over long on. They have to learn the sweep, learn the reverse sweep. They've got to learn all these shots because they'll have to execute them. So, you know, it's batting to score, Neil, not batting to save your wicket. You know, when you bat to save your wicket, you're not going to be successful. So you've got to be busy at the crease. You've got to look for a single. So as we spoke at the beginning about, you know, practice. So a decent decent ball in practice and you defend the ball, ball rolls back to the bowler. That's poor. No one's interested in how good you look. Same ball, you've defended with soft hands and dropped the ball in front of sort of, you know, squarish cover or something and you've taken a single. That's smart training. So, so when you're going out there, you're rotating the strike. You're not just stuck and facing the best bowler in the world, six six times. You will nick off, boss. And then you touched on this earlier in the chat about failure, but I think it's worth diving a bit deeper into the topic. Like in our game, it's almost seen that if a batsman doesn't get a hundred, it is a failure. How? What tips would again would you give youngsters in terms of, you know, dealing with that aspect? From a mental point of view? Well, I think I think you must fail. You will fail. And the, the simple equation for that is, let's pick the four best test match batters. Smith, Coley, Root, Williamson. Okay, let's say these are the four best players now. What's their average? 50, 50 plus. So that tells you if they've played 100 test matches or they've played 50 test matches and they're averaging, if they're averaging 50, means they've not scored in every game. Otherwise, their average would have been 150. So you will fail. What is important is, you know, and that's the challenge for coaches. That's the challenge for the players. When it's great, everyone's happy. When it's not great, people are not happy. The fact remains, cricket can't be your life. You know, there are other things in life as well. It's just like a job. You know, I'm coming here having a discussion with you. At this moment of time, if I start thinking, how many people will listen to this? Who are these people who are going to listen to this? And my next thing is, wow, what happens if suddenly Shane Warne's listening to this? Or oh, Kevin Peterson is listening, listening to this. So straight away, I'm bringing in things which I can't control. And I'm bringing a lot of fear of, am I saying the correct thing? It's not, for, it's not for me to judge. I have a job. You're talking, you have a conversation with me. And I'm trying to give the best answers, which I think is right. Now, there could be 10 people watching this and say, Please don't get this guy anymore. Or there could be another 10 people saying, wow, he was amazing. Now, what I'm trying to advise youngsters is when they say amazing, it's only because you have executed it. They haven't. And when you're not, when they're saying you're rubbish, again, you've executed it. They haven't. So in that case, why do I get excited if people say, wow? And why do I get depressed if people say you're rubbish you play cricket for yourself you play cricket for your team as long as you're honest as long as you love the game and as long as you're giving your best that's it rest is not in your hand and then for any batsman if you do play for any period of time you don't you do go through a string of low scores feeling out of form feeling you can't even hit it off the square. Again, from a mental perspective, what advice would you give players going through a rough patch in terms of low scores? Okay, so again, this is a fa fantastic question you've asked. And I'm telling you why this is a really... I, I love this question, actually, because if this is so close to anything else you do in life. Imagine you're a banker and you have got a pot of money which you're investing. 
if you're a smart banker and you've made a lot of money, you're not going to spend everything. You're going to save it. You're going to spend, but also save. Reason being, you will always tell yourself that there could be a time where I could have a really bad slump. So when that slump happens, I should be protected for that slump. Same in cricket. When you bat well and you go, oh, 30, 40, 50, 60, be greedy. Because you, are, you do not know when your slump is coming. Now, if you go out there and score 440s, right? 40, 44, 43, 41. I promise you, Neil, then you would have played like a champion, right? No one will remember you. But if you play 300s and you have a bad slump, people will tell you, well, hang on a minute, he's out of form. We know that this kid can score. So first advice, when you get set, bank it. This is your bank account. Score as much as you, don't give it away because you're having a great period. Two, when you're in form slump and you want to work on your technique, first you need to see what's happening. Where are you getting out? What are the mistakes you're making? Has your setup changed? Has your uh, you know, back lift changed? You know, are you doing anything which is technically at fault? Then you've got to work on it. If not, simple thing again is to go into the nets and focus that every ball's coming and hitting your bat. Because what happens is, when we are in form, we see the ball coming out of the bowler's hand. We see the ball travel. Because we are in such good form, we then make the judgment, right? That's going to be shot. I'm going to punch it. That's going to be full. I'm going to drive it. When you're in a slum form, that, that timing sense goes. So the instinct sense goes. So then what you need to do is go back to basics. Watch the ball right to the bat. So that means you're going back to your you know, kindergarten days, right? I'm watching that ball. And the moment you're doing that, watching that ball coming and hitting your bat, hitting your bat, you regain your timing and everything falls back. And then if you watch on TV and an elite player smashes a hundred, you hear the commentator say he looked in the zone. Is that just another way of saying that he's mentally balanced through that innings? Absolutely. Absolutely. When they say that, all they mean is he's gone out there and he's got grips of his body and now he's in that sort of mental space where you've got to get him out. Most of the time, we get out as batters. When you can get to a point when a bowler has to get you out, that's when you're a champion player. Sid, it's a fast, fascinating topic. Before we end it, what is your best piece of advice on the subject for a young player perhaps watching this? Well, firstly, please, please do not worry about results. Please, please do not worry about selections. And I'm telling this to the students, young players, also their parents. None of this is in your control. Work on your game. Love the game. Respect the game. And the first thing to understand in this is, it would never be a level playing field if you as a batter turned up and scored 100 every time. So it's but natural that you're going to be out. It's but natural people will get you out. That's fine. That's fair. There's nothing to lose on that. As long as you go back and you understand where you're making the mistake. And if you don't, go and discuss with your coaches. You don't need 1,500 coaches. Just go and discuss with your co coaches. Work on it. And then when you play your match, when you practice. So... I'll give you an example. If you're playing a lofted shot and getting out, go into a net and say to yourself, right, I'm going to bat 30 minutes today and I'm not going to play a single lofted shot. That's where you're improving. 
the greatest cricketer of all, Sachin did it. When he was driving and nicking off in Australia, he scored a double hundred where he did not lay a single cover drive. Now that's the discipline we need in the mind that, right, I've got it. I'm now going to really make it count. Said perfect. Thank you for your time today. And all the best for the, for the months ahead. Anil, well done again to you. You know, I've been watching all your interviews. You know, I'm very glad that I started. You know, we both started pretty at the same time, you know, early days. And I see you growing. Well done, mate. And thank you for inviting me. And I hope, you know, people and young players especially enjoy this. I look forward to speaking to you again. Uh, and good luck to you and all the best. Thank you, Sid. So Neil Kagram, Cricket Life Stories, Sid Lahiri. Thank you. Thank you.